and welcome to the nightclub inside the Torre Cabrada Hotel, just round the corner from Torre Molinas on Spain's Costa del Sol. Hello, good evening to you. For the first time ever, Britain could have two reigning world middleweight champions. In superb style at the PAC National Exhibition Centre last weekend, Chris Eubank sees his chance, and Chris and his fiance Karen are here at ringside tonight. A very different setting, but still it's the biggest prize of all, waiting for Harold Graham, the stylish British champion. Now, if you're a bit confused about the overall world middleweight picture, let me just refresh your memories. Michael, second to none, he's the International Boxing Federation, the IBF champion at 11-6. Mike McCallum, who outpointed Graham last year, he's the WBA champ, the World Boxing Association. Chris Eubank has taken the World Boxing Organization, the WBO title, from Nigel Benn. Tonight's fight is for the vacant World Boxing Council. Julian Jackson stands between Graham and Glory. Bomber Graham, the 31-year-old Sheffield Southpaw, has only lost twice on split decisions to world champions. He's a great technician, but knows he must produce the goods tonight to leapfrog into the big time and the big money. This fight tonight is very, very important to me, really. It's one of the fights which have been the championships which have been eluding me, the World Championship. I've got all the others, the British European Commonwealth, now I want the World Championship. So it is very important for me, uh, for one of my goals, which I'm uh, aiming for, to, uh, to lift the World Championship tonight. Julian Jackson has only been beaten by the brilliant McCallum. He was a fearsome puncher at light middleweight. Now, the board won't allow him to fight in Britain after an eye operation. Jackson insists there's no problem. He's expecting a great fight tonight. Oh, man, it's, it's going to be action from the, the round one, you know, and um, how Graham will definitely be on the bike. I know that. And um, any mistake made by him, I will definitely be there to take the uh, opportunity. And um, I'm expecting a, a beautiful fight. I'm expecting a, a technical fight. And uh, it's going to be uh, one of the best fight you have ever seen. Well, we're all set here waiting for the arrival of the two fighters. It's a very different setting to the NEC. Less than a thousand people inside this uh, casino hotel on the Costa del Sol. Harold Graham, for my money, really deserves a world title. He served his time in this boxing trade, over 300 rounds as a pro, 12 years as a professional too. And led out by Brendan Ingle, his longtime trainer and mentor. Here comes the bomber, Harold Graham. Union Jacks inside the ring, and quite a lot of supporters come from Sheffield. He'll carry most support here in Spain tonight. Harold Bomber Graham. It's a sizable ring here, and that'll suit the fleet footed, artful skills of Harold Graham respected so much inside the trade. In fact, it's worth stressing that both Nigel Benn and Chris Eubank, they really don't want to face him in the same ring. Had a word with him yesterday. In fact, he's been working out inside a squash court a few miles away from here. Had his fight face on, and deep down he knows that he has got to overcome this fella, Julian Jackson from the Virgin Islands. A family man, father of five, Julian Jackson, a bit like Harold Graham. The big publicity and the big money hasn't come his way yet. And uh, at 30, well, time's running out for him as well. OK, let's pop over the balcony from my position and join your big fight commentators at ringside. Jim Watt, and first of all, let's say a very good evening to Reg Guttridge. Well, hello then, and draw up a very cosy ringside seat with us here in the, this rather remarkable hotel and site for a championship of the world. They had problems putting it on, couldn't go on in Britain, so uh, it's come here with the, the Matchroom Barry Home promotions. And uh, as Jim Rosenthal was saying, it, uh, there's been no bad mouth in between the boxers, and that's always a pleasure because they're both very good technicians. I wouldn't want to say compare this with uh, the sort of 
rough and tumble and excitement that we had uh, only a week ago with Ben and Eubank because these are entirely different type of boxes. So over to uh, the MC, Nat Basso. Uh, gentlemen, please. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, Danny Hearn's Matchroom, in association with Jack Trickett, proudly presents the main event of the evening, sponsored by Stormsteam. A 12-round international middleweight contest of three minutes each round at 11 stone, six pound, for the vacant WC middleweight championship of the world, between and in addition to you, with a record of 42 contests, 41 wins, 40 by the KO, the WBA light middleweight champion of the world from the Virgin Island USA, Julian Jackson. And in this corner, with a record of 45 contests, 43 wins, 26 by stoppages, the middleweight champion of Great Britain and the former middleweight champion of Europe from Sheffield in England, Harold Bonner. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your officials appointed by the WBC, your judges are from California, USA, Rudy Ortega, from Mexico, Jose Buen Guyana, from New Jersey, USA, Trump Calabanic, and your referee from New Jersey, USA, Joe Cortez. The WB sponsor is Ruben Martinez of Spain, and your representative for the British Boxing Board of Control is the General Secretary, Mr. John Morris, and your team of timekeeper is Francisco Morales of Spain. So the rundown then from uh, Joe Cortez, comes from New Jersey, the referee. He handled the Jim McDonnell and Azuma Nelson contest, among many others. He's done a couple of Tyson fights, I remember. So a friendly good luck to both of you then from referee Cortez. And now, he's been in a melting pot plenty of times now, Harold Graham, and at uh, 31, it's got to be perhaps his last fling, but he's the, the most experienced of the active uh, British boxers at championship level. He's fought three 15-rounders in the old days, wow. more than any, any other active British boxer, but this is 12 for the opening round. Well, Jackson there, uh, obviously in the gold and the southpaw style of uh, Graham in the fancy pants. Jackson a couple of times and I can tell you he is a really good puncher, solid puncher. Not the greatest of names in the middleweight division, but he could, could easily be because he gets people duck him a little bit and uh, moving up from the light middleweight to the full middleweight division and of course the championship is vacant. So they're splitting the, the matchroom purse right down the middle which in dollars came to $223,000. I, I make that about £56,000 each. Well, it's a more aggressive start from Graham Regent than we expected, and obviously more aggressive than uh, Jackson expected. So Graham's uh, standing his ground, he's pushing Jackson back, Jackson with, with uh, the more punching power, so good tactics in the first round from Graham. It's going to be very much of a chess match contest, Jim, this one, isn't it? Because they're both correct boxes. Yeah, well, although Graham is uh, known as a counter-puncher, he has a good style. He actually can come forward, draw leads and counter-punch, although he's coming forward, and that's how he started the first round here. He's standing his ground, edging forward, trying to draw leads from Jackson. Well, I don't know if there's anything seriously wrong with his eyesight, but there was with that punch. Mile away there, Jackson. 
sort of got mad with himself there, Jim, for missing, didn't he, Jackson? They threw a few wild punches afterwards. Yeah, well, I think he's going to have to get used to that because, uh, as we very well know, Graham is the hardest man in the business to catch with clean shots. And if you catch him with one, almost impossible to, to double up on it. Oh, yes, he's definitely a ring Houdini, isn't he, uh, Graham? Remember, he lost a, a split verdict to Mike McCallum, who's one of the best ring generals around, actually, and his last championship bid in London, and would have won it, but for being a uh, point taken away for cautioning. This is good stuff from Graham uh, th this early. He's standing his ground, he's not allowing Jackson to push him back and get leverage into his own punching. They say, good start, very accurate with it. He's not putting a lot of power into his punches, but accurate and keeping his man confused. It's the art of this game is to hit without being hit, and he's good at that, though. So the end of the first, and a good start by the British champion. So, uh, only two losses when you think of it. It's quite, quite an amazing uh, record. That, and both of them were world champions. Mike McCullum and Sambu Kalambe. He became world champion uh, against Kalambe. And over to Jackson's corner then. And he's only lost the one, remember. That's, uh, that's really going some, isn't it? And uh, he gave up the light middleweight uh, championship, defended it twice. And his last fight was back in uh, June. That was his first at the middleweight, the 11 stone, 6 division. And both boxers are exactly 11 stone, 6. So coming out early for play here, round two. A bit of a frustrating touch about Jackson there, Jim. I'm a bit surprised. Ja Jackson was a little bit slow off the mark in the first round. Uh, he, he didn't try, I mean, maybe maybe this is the way he does business, maybe he just uh, tries to pot shot in the first round, but he didn't do a lot of work. Already he seems to be trying to liven up, he's in court, and he's blinking his eye, Reg, I wonder if he's got eye damage already. Well, that's, that's a really bad sign for Jackson there. He's, made it, he's closing it to him as though he's caught it with a thumb, but that really shouldn't happen because these glove uh, thumbs are attached. Well, this is excellent news for Graham. Already, Jackson's complaining. He's backing off out here. He's just really covering up. He's not really throwing anything. And I don't think he's trying to suck up Graham forward. I think he has trouble with that left eye. He came, obviously, with ophthalmologist clearances and specialists at his eyesight and the, the detached retina had healed properly. So that possibly could have happened to him even without already having a high problem because there's a swelling there as well, isn't there? Yeah, there's a little less swelling just in the soft tissue uh, immediately below the eye. It's maybe just the, the edge of the glove that's caught in there. But the Graham wants to be nice and careful as he usually is. Doesn't want to run onto anything here. Oh, that's, uh, that's really making him, uh, if you'll forgive the expression, a mug, isn't it there, Jackson? He fell right across the ring. His only loss was again to Mike McCullum, who both of them have now beaten, has beaten both of them. Well, they're uh, having trouble with the left eye against uh, the southpaw jab of Earl Graham Red. You don't have your troubles to seek. And there's no three knockdown rule here, you may have seen in other contests, if a man goes down three times in one round, it's stop. It doesn't, it's not an effect here. And this is the most prestigious, I think, of the World Championships, the World Boxing Council, which is partly formed by Britain's Boxing Board of Control. You see Jackson has switched round, Reg. He's standing south point now. I don't know if that's because of the eye. Maybe he reckons he can see better out there, the right eye, but that wouldn't do his technique a lot of good. No, he really does have a problem there, Jackson, so early in the contest.
It takes a good, correct, sharp puncher, doesn't it, Jim, uh, to catch Graham at the best, and if he's already under handicap, Jackson. Yes, and even when you catch Graham, he's pulling away from the punch and taking some of the sting. An excellent start in this contest for Errol Graham. Joe Cortez picking up the judges, and there it is then. And they'll need that uh, little end swell that's that trying to work that away there. Uh, the soft tissue, as Jim Watt said. Uh, and there it is. It's uh, quite a nasty start for him. They drop that in the ice bucket and uh, hold it on there and apply a lot of pressure. But, but it looks as though the eye itself was hurt there, Jim, doesn't it? Not just the swelling. Yeah, well, you have to remember what, what it does to his mind. He knows he had trouble with his eye, and then that happens. So psych psychologically, it was a big dip. So you can see as it comes here, he starts blinking and really looked a little bit worried about what was going on there. Lost all his rhythm. Again, they've got to wait for the bell. There's a little bit of confusion with the Spanish timekeeper, I suspect. So third round. And really, Jim, it's almost like one of Graham's calculated workouts at the moment. He's not extending himself at all. Yep, and the, the right jab's working well, Reg. He, he does pull his head up high. That's still a danger against this fellow, but he's always done that, Reg. He's never been stopped or knocked out yet. So who am I to criticise? But now and again, he does put his chin in dangerous territory. In the previous fight today, saw Jackson. He didn't box in the southpaw stand, so I don't know whether he was a natural southpaw and then converted. I think he switched round because of the eye rage. I think maybe he reckons he, his vision will be better looking out of his right eye. But uh, if he's not a natural southpaw, then he's going to have a lot of trouble catching this man, Graham. Again, Graham head in the wrong position there, but he managed to block the punch. He really does take some chances of uh, pulling his chin back up so high. Oh, look at that one. He pulled him under that punch. I didn't know. As he walked under it, I should say, there was a good shot by Graham. comes from the Don King promotional camp, managed uh, by his son, Carl King, who's here. And uh, they rated Jackson very highly and fancied his luck here. They were very confident coming into the fight. It's a, a different story now. Well, Graham's confidence really must be, be bulging now, Reg. His things are going well for him. He's just shaking Jackson with a nice little uh, counter punch. Everything going smoothly. He just wants to carry on being nice and careful. Well, he's certainly had to wait a long time, and, uh, well, it's still got a while to go yet in this uh, fight, of course. I think he's just about completed 304 rounds now with this round in his pro career. Went 10 years without losing a decision from amateurs. Jimmy Harrington, I think it was, back in 77, and then Callum Bay in 87. That's quite a record. He should have had uh, a championship by now. He's jockeying around with British and European as he wants, Graham. They seem to have got some of that swelling down, Jim. What's your opinion there? Well, uh, it certainly hasn't got any worse, uh, thankfully, for, for Jackson's case. I don't know if they've actually got the swelling down, but the main thing is it hasn't worsened. But I don't know how he feels uh, leading with this uh, right hand of his. And have a look at this replay now again there. See, that was there. He really was off balance and good. He was definitely hurt with that shot. Clean as a whistle, he looks, doesn't he? Nothing, no problem there. And uh, 
referee Joe Cortez has actually gone over to uh, have a look at Jackson. There's the referee looking in. And he can call a doctor for a second opinion if he wants to. Take time off, he's saying, uh, to the timekeeper. Uh, yes, and looks like he's taken the doctor, called the doctor up for an opinion. But the referee makes the final choice. Round four. Oh, that was uh, one of the grounds that was shoved there, a bit obvious. It's 14 touch though. Well, Jackson back to orthodox again, Reggie. Maybe he means business, maybe he's going to really have a go in this round. Uh, he's maybe thinking that time is really running out with that eye injury. I don't know what the doctor has said to him. Switching stance again, Jim. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's back to his old style of the, the orthodox lead. He maybe he reckons he's going to have to throw everything into attack and try and get Graham out of there. With that eye injury, the doctor looking at it in between rounds is obviously added to his concern. Keeping him off balance all the time, Reg. He's not getting any power into his punches. He can't put punches together. Graham's there, then he's off. He's peppering him with little southpaw leads. Good boxing from Graham. After convincing, there have been times I've seen Graham and he's disappointed me a bit, but he's as sharp as a tack for this one, isn't he? Yeah, but and the good thing tonight, Reg, he hasn't got on his bike, he hasn't been running around the ring keeping out of trouble. He's been standing right in front of Jackson, actually backing him up for most of the time. And this is good stuff here. He's pinning Jackson, drawing little leads and thumping home counter punches. Using every inch. Oh, what a punch! I can't believe that. Never been stopped in his career. And he's out to the world, winning every round there, Harold Grant. Jim, have you ever seen such a turnaround? I did say at the start of the show, by the way, that I'd see, I knew he was a good puncher. But as the contest went on, I thought there was no chance of him catching Graham. Well, Reg, as we said earlier, Graham, he puts his chin in places. Your chin should not be. He did it once too often, and Jackson caught with that one. All through the fight, he just had his chin a whisker away from Jackson's counter punches. But that was a perfect punch. And really, before he hit the floor, he was completely out. No hope of beating the count. And Jackson really pulled that one out of the fire. He was in trouble himself. Well behind in points. But at a long last, day, Graham's lack of a tight defence has let him down again at top level, Reg. Well, it's, I know he's a quality fighter, but he, he just didn't know how to catch up with Graham. But when he did, what a payoff punch that is. And certainly, with it, with obviously an impaired vision, whatever happens, but he got to him in the end there, Jackson. And uh, leaving Graham in the ring, turned him on his side. It's a normal procedure. But as he hit the deck gym, I mean, he was out long before he hit the canvas. Yeah, well, I was impressed the way uh, Graham was holding the ring and, and, and backing uh, Jackson up. But in the end, actually, that's been his undoing. As I say, his chin was far too high. You got to be showing forehead to, to a good puncher. See, up he goes, his, his head, his chin goes high. See, there it is. Where it has been so often in the past, Jackson took full advantage of it, gone before he hit the floor. And there it is again from another angle, and whatever you look at it, it's a devastating punch. His head crashed into the canvas, which uh, obviously has a rubber padding underneath and needs it. Bobby Lewis, trainer there, he's worked, this fellow here, he's worked with Michael Dokes and Ron Lyle, he's uh, an old warrior in this game. So it's no use saying, Jim, that that was the plan, because it looked as though he was never going to catch ground, but when he did, the only, the only real punch, he's landed. Yeah, well, it's really the first time that he caught uh, Graham's chin cleanly. As I say, Graham couldn't have boxed any better. His tactics were good, everything was good, but we did comment earlier on that once or twice his chin was just too high and he pulls away from punches. But uh, this fellow must have tremendous power because he didn't set himself for that punch. He just came out of his own accord, and as soon as it landed, Reggie, the fight was over. He's been in there a long time, Jim. That's uh, very concerned about that, aren't you? 
You see, they don't get them out, we know now, that for the last few years, they won't haul them out of the ring as they did in those bad old days, actually dragging them out. And maybe the doctors uh, want to leave him, make sure he can breathe properly. Yeah, well, they do encourage fighters who have been uh, caught with punches like that to stay on the floor a, a few minutes uh, longer, lie on their side so they can breathe properly, their tongue doesn't fill up. I think he, he's fully conscious. I, I can see some movement there, but I think they're just keeping him down. Uh, just to give him time to, to get his head clear. But it was a tremendous punch, and he was completely relaxed as he went over, and I think his head he landed on the canvas too, which didn't uh, help his troubles. And once more, Jim, with the overhead camera there, as you say, he just pulled his head up a bit like a weather vane there, and uh, bang, I mean, he, he just collapsed. See, it's an amazing punch because Jackson was actually off balance slightly himself, but he, he drew the, the, the punch all the way back. But see, there, there's Graham up now. Uh, thankfully, he seems to be responding to the doctor. He's being very firm with him, the doctor, too. Testing the vision there. Manager Brendan Ingle, obviously, by his side. Same manager is actually technically the trainer. The manager Barney Eastwood is in the audience. Well, he's he's being very composed about it, Jim. He's not showing off. He's uh, a nice professional attitude from a champion that with Jackson, isn't it? He's waiting till the man gets out of the ring safely. Yeah, and I think he must be slightly relieved, Reg, because nothing was going his way. He was injured. He was behind in points. He wasn't really making any headway. He couldn't solve his man out, and he wins by a one-punch knockout. In one minute, 13 seconds of the fourth round, the new WBC middleweight champion of the world, Julian Jackson. Well, Julian, a big smile, and uh, you're the new world champion, but for quite a while tonight, you must have thought you wouldn't get your hands on that belt. Well, I had no um, doubt in my mind. Harold Graham caught me some good punch, but I realized that the punches weren't as, I, um, as effective as I thought they would have been. You know, he stunned me a few times, but I had my faculties together, and I was just waiting for that opportunity when I landed my shot. You know, he moved pretty well, and believe me, he, he surprised me when he stood in the middle of the ring. I expected him to move, so he threw me off. You know, and it took me a while to really get my, my things together. But we weren't just viewing the, the fight through British eyes. I would think most people around ringside here would have you three rounds down when you landed that vital punch. Oh, definitely. I knew I was behind. You know, I knew, but I kept on him. I kept the pressure on him. And I knew yeah. sometime in, in the ring or in the fight, I would have got my shot off. Well, we all wondered if you still had the power as a middleweight. And I think if you look down here now, you'll, you'll be able to see um, that uh, you pack a fair old dig, Julian. No one's ever done that to him before. I knew that. Woo, that was a beauty. I must say, I was timing him. I was timing him while I was going back in the corner, and I kept my eyes on him until he made that drop to throw his left hook to deliver his punch, and he was open, and I threw the left, the right hook and caught him flush on the chin. You turned the fight upside down, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. I know he was very, very confident, you know? He felt that he had everything in control, but I knew what I had to do in order to get my punch off. Did you feel you had to do it uh, very, very quickly with a view to that, to the way that I realized I was that I had to put the pressure on him because my eye was closing pretty, pretty fast. And I knew I got to, I had to get him before, you know, it got in the later rounds because I probably might have, wouldn't have been able to see through his eye, you know. But well, thank God, and um, I give him all the glory and all the praise in the world. Wow. For he is king, and he is lord of lords. All right, I can't yeah. compete with that, but uh, you said you got to feed your wife and five kids back home, didn't you? Yes, yes, and I dedicate this to the lord and saviour of my life and to my baby girl, Joy, Sister Joy. I'm coming home with the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. You've done it. Well done. Let's just, let's just bring Barry Hearn in here. Barry, uh, Obviously, mixed feelings about this one, because you must have felt, Barry, that uh, Harold Graham was going to be another British world champion. Well, it looked like it, didn't it? But Jackson's so dangerous with that right hand, and maybe a moment of uh, lack of concentration, perhaps, I don't know, of Errol. So far in front, hadn't lost a round. This guy can punch. But uh, I'd like to see him in a ring with Mr Eubank. You think that would be a possibility to, to the unify that, or a couple of the titles, anyway? Well, uh, Eubank, the WBO champion, Julian Jackson, the WBC. It's a huge money fight. Don King is not averse to making a few dollars. 
And I think Mr. Eubank will put him in his place nicely. You know, he's uh, this guy's a puncher, but Chris will do a dem demolition job on him. But tonight belongs to Julian Jackson. It does indeed. What do you feel now about Harold Graham's future at the age of 31, Barry? Well, you know, Harold's got to wonder whether he's ever going to get another chance. It's very unlikely, I think, and he's going to have to take a long, hard look at his career tonight. He's going to be very disappointed, but, you know, that's boxing. That's right. A few uh, jaws dropped open at ringside when that happened, yours included. Well, he was out in mid-air, Harold. It was one of the hardest punches I've ever seen thrown by a middleweight. It was. OK, Barry Hearn, thanks Thank very you. much indeed. So there we are. We have a new world champion from Spain. It's Julian Jackson from the Virgin Islands and our commiserations of course go out to Harold Graham flattened for the first time in his boxing career. We've got more boxing